So today, you're going to learn something called implicit differentiation. You see, so far what we've done is worked with is explicit forms of equations. Let me give you an example. This right here, when you have y equals a function in terms of x, where you have one y, it's solved for, equals some function in x, such as y equals 3x plus 4, is considered an, or maybe even 3x squared plus 4, is an explicit form of a function. Explicit means y is over here, your x's are over here. You can solve for y. Does that make sense for you? This is explicit. It means y is given explicitly. It tells you exactly what y is. On the other hand, Is this an explicit function? Is y solved for itself and then x is on the other side? No, as a matter of fact, you see y is mixed in with x's. This is called implicit form. Implicit means, yes, there's a y there, and you're going to say that y is a function of x, but it's not written as y equals. So y is still a function of x, it's just bound up in the problem. That's what implicit means. So this is implicit. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of times, not a lot of times, some of the times, we can make an implicit function into an explicit. Let me show you how in this example. Firstly, if we wanted to solve this for y, I would probably factor out the y. I get 1 plus x equals x. Are you with me on that? And if I divide by 1 plus x, I get x, y equals x over 1 plus x. And that's now explicitly written. So sometimes I can change from implicit to explicit. So if the y is alone on one side, that means it's written explicitly. So explicit. Y alone on one side. How about this one? Let's see if you kind of get the idea. Would you say this is implicit or explicit? Implicit, explicit. Explicit would have y equals. Implicit would have y's and x's all mixed up. What's this one? Definitely. Could you solve it for y? Okay, let's try. Uh, we solve for y. We're going to get y squared equals 4 minus x squared. And how would you get y by itself? So y would equal the square root of 4 minus x squared. True or false? Think carefully, true or false. What's wrong? Very good, because when you take a square root, you have to put the plus and minus, right? So here's what this says. Well, actually, what is this? Do you, do you recognize the square root of 4 minus x squared and the negative square root of 4 minus x squared? What are those? No, what I mean, what shape on the graph is that? What's this? That's a half circle. This is a lower half circle. Do you see this? This is our two, our upper. That's a circle, by the way. Radius of two centered at zero, zero. So this is an upper half circle and a lower half circle. What that means is that implicit functions can often define two different functions. Uh, or sorry, implicit ex equations can often define two different functions. This is not a function by itself because when I plug in one number, I get out two answers. That says it's not a function. It's an implicit equation. It's actually two different, two distinct functions, an upper and a lower half circle. Do you see what I'm talking about? So oftentimes, that's what happens. Implicit equations can define one, more than one function of x. Just like it did here, this is implicit. That's two different functions. 
So, so far we know what explicit means, I hope. We know what implicit means, I hope. That means bound up within that. Y is still a function of X. Sometimes we can solve for it and change it from implicit to explicit. And sometimes the implicit equation will make more than one function of X. Now, how, consider this example. How about this? Would you say implicit or explicit? What do you think? Super implicit. Super implicit. Well, that's another level. Super implicit. <laughs> it's like super whoa. Uh, huh. You agree that is implicit, right? Okay, good. You understand that. Could you solve it for y? <coughs> Could you solve it for y in such a way that it's y by itself equals a function completely in x with no other x's? I mean, sure, you could divide by 9x, but that's still a y. Let me refresh you remember what explicit means. Explicit means there's one y. It's alone on one side. Everything else is at x's. Can you do that here? Yes. Oh, try it. Try it if you want. Can you do it easily? Let me ask you another question. Can you do it easily here? No. No, you can't. Because the way you might do this is subtract this over, subtract this over, right? But then you'd have 3y cubed minus 9xy, you'd factor out a y, but you're still left with y squared in there, right? There's really no good way to get rid of that, at least not easily. So can you easily get this into an implicit, I'm uh, sorry, an explicit form? Can you do it? The answer is no. This, this cannot be written explicitly. If there is a way, it's not going to be easy. If, if sometimes there is no way. You can't write it explicitly for some equations. Now, keep in mind what we're doing here. We're not doing basic algebra. We're doing calculus. And calculus involves derivatives, right? Yes, right? Okay. No, we've been doing nothing this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Uh, so here's the deal. If this is implicit and I can solve for explicit, I could take the derivative of that. And in fact, that would involve a quotient rule, right? And this one, I could actually take the derivative of the top function or the bottom function and be just fine. That would involve the chain rule or the general power rule because of that one half. This one, though, there's actually no way that we're going to be able to get that as y equals something in terms of x. You with me? What that means is, even if you got y by itself, there's still going to be other y's in here that are going to mess you up. We don't want that. So we have to have another method to find derivatives instead of just having y equals a function in x. There's got to be a different way, and there is. And it's called implicit differentiation. That's what we're doing today. So we're going to talk about how we take a derivative of this thing without having to solve it for y. Now that's kind of an interesting question, right? Can you take a derivative without having it y equals? Yeah, you can. We're going to look at that today. So for example, it's not, the calculus isn't hard. The algebra might be a little bit, but the calculus is not hard. Implicit, explicit, everybody, what is that? Explicit would be y equals something. Is that the case? <coughs> this is explicit. This is implicit. This is implicit. This is implicit. Unless it says y equals, then it's not explicit. What is this one again? Implicit. Definitely implicit. Now, we could actually solve this one for y. Do you see that? We'd subtract x cubed. We'd take a cube root. It would be just fine. You could find the derivative that way. But what I'm trying to show you today is how to do this without having to do that by just solving this uh, derivative, or solving for the, the derivative without having to solve for y. Because of examples like that, which we're going to have to do that. So we could solve for y, take derivative, or we could use implicit differentiation. Here's the whole deal though. In order to do this, you must treat y as a function of x. Because if you could solve it for y, y would equal something in terms of x, right? So you have to treat it, and that's going to be important here in just a second, you're going to see why in, in a bit. You must treat y as a function of x. Must treat y as a function of x. You know how you can add something to two sides of an equation? You subtract something from both sides of the equation, multiply, you divide, take an exponent, take a root, uh, pretty much do almost anything you want to to both sides of the equation as long as you do it to both sides. 
You know that, right? Mm -hmm. Did you know you can also take a derivative of both sides of an equation? Did you? Mm -hmm. You do now. Don't. You can do anything to an equation that you want to, pretty much. Along, uh, along with taking a derivative, you can do that. So I could actually take a derivative with respect to my variable. What's my variable that I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with here? Y. There's two variables. So how do, you, how do you tell which one? We're talking about y as a function of x, right? So you're going to have this with respect to x. So we're still treating x as our variable. Y is a function of that variable that you just don't know explicitly. You don't know exactly what it is. Do you get the idea? So y, is good, y equals something. Right? We don't know exactly what it is because we don't want to solve for it. We don't really care that much. Like this one, you don't really care that much. You're just saying, OK, I know y is a function in terms of x. And that's what we're dealing with here. So we're going to take a derivative of x cubed plus y cubed, and that equals what do you think? 5 or the derivative of 5? Derivative, derivative of both sides. So we treat y as a function of x that we simply just don't know. We don't know what y actually equals and we don't really care. Here's our steps then. I've shown you the first one. The first one is you're going to take a derivative or differentiate both sides with respect to x. Just make sure you do it to both sides. It's an equation after all. You have to do that. So drive both sides. Not sides. Both sides. With respect to x. I'll start you off with the easy side. The easy side is the 5 side. Let's start on the 5 side. Can you tell me what's the derivative of 5, which is a constant? Zero. Zero. Very good. If you leave it at 5, do you see that would really affect your problem? That would be a problem. Zero. Now, let's look in here. Can we take the derivative of these pieces? They're added together, which means I could take them term by term. Are you with me on this? I'm glad you're here today. This is something you really need to see. Now, the derivative of x cubed is pretty easy to do. We're taking a derivative with respect to x. You follow me on that? In fact, if I wanted to, since that's separable by addition, I could do, I'm going to show this to you one time. We typically won't do this, but I'm going to show it to you here. You could write x cubed, derivative of x cubed plus the derivative d dx of y cubed. OK, with that so far, right? Yes, no? Yes. What's the derivative of x cubed with respect to x? How much is that? 3x squared. Very good. Plus. Now, this is the weird one. What's our variable that we're taking the derivative with respect to? We're taking it with respect to, it says right here, what is that? Fx. But that's a y. Now, here's the idea. y is a function in terms of x, right? So basically, this is interesting. I hope you find this interesting. I'll show this to you in a second. Uh, what you have here is actually a general power rule. You actually have that. Do you see it? It really is this. It's really that. It'd be the same thing. Check this out. It'd be the same thing as doing this. Uh, 3x squared minus 1 to the fourth. Is this a function of x? Mm -hmm. no. Yes. It's being raised to some power, right? And how you do this is actually with the chain rule, the special version, the corollary, which is called the general power rule. Are you with me on this? You bring down the 